Hello, hello. Welcome back to another class. Um, if you are watching the live replay um, and it's after class, uh, I will be leaving timestamps below so that you can skip ahead to whatever section uh, you would like to. But if you are here live, make sure to say hi um, in the comments below. Let me know where you're from. Who you're painting with and all of that jazz i'm so excited to be here and painting um it's exciting i've been um painting a lot lately because i'm trying to um i'm attempting to kind of get ahead and pre-record some stuff for my patreon um because i am due with my baby in like two months so that's really exciting. Um, two months? Three months? Wait. It is July, August, September. Yep, two months. Crazy. Um, hi, getting material set up. Thank you, Smitha. You're welcome. Hello from Canada. We always have a ton of Canadians, so welcome from Canada. Um, welcome to welcome people from Canada, because I'm not from Canada. <laughs> Welcome from San Diego. <laughs> um, I will say for today's um, class, because we are using palette knives, if you if you want to use palette knives, um, grab yourself an extra pal uh, an extra paper towel um, because we'll be wiping off the um, the palette knives and things like that. So you'll want an extra one just in case, so you don't have to like get up. Um, congratulations on having a baby. Boy or girl? It is a girl. Her name is Amelia Joy. Yeah, it's crazy. I feel like we just found out we were pregnant and all of a sudden I'm like already in the third trimester. And it's like, this year has been so slow, but at the same time, we're almost in August. Like, how did that happen? <laughs> it's crazy. Hi, Lynn. Goodness. I'm just excited to paint. I I love painting. And I love that I get to share it with all of you. So welcome. Hello. Yeah, I think I I think I got all my supplies out. Um I was a little bit of ahead of schedule today, which normally I'm like right on schedule, but hubby's taking care of the kids, so that all that's always super helpful. But yeah. It finally cooled down today. It's been really nice out. And yesterday it was not nice. It was hot. Actually, this last week here, it was pretty hot. It was pretty warm. Um, I am sitting outside on my deck today. First time this year. Oh, that means it's probably feeling nice out. You will have to be careful though, because if it's windy, things might blow over. And if it's not windy, but it's like, just nice out it your acrylics might dry a little bit faster so just keep that in mind when you're like trying to blend things because um, being outside it does affect your paints at least with using acrylics I don't know how much it affects oils but um, it's been really hot here and is VA is Virginia right ready for fall I'm ready for fall too I love fall and jeans and scarves and all that sort of thing but I don't feel like it ever really gets fall weather here in San Diego it's pretty much just like somewhere in the middle and then sometimes it has like highs and lows but it's not like which is really great when you have kids um because it's like you don't have to worry about bundling them up um too much at least um um, hello, I didn't catch the intro. How long have you been painting new to teaching, new to teaching class? Um, no, I've been painting. Oh goodness. How long have I been painting? Hold on a second. I have to think about this like pregnancy brain. Plus it's been a while. So I have to like, um, I think I officially started teaching in 2015. So I've, I've only been like teaching acrylic paints per se for six years um and I did a lot of on and off teaching um for like dance and things like that so I've always I've always been able to kind of like 
share and teach. Um, so I knew, um, I knew when I wanted to paint more and teach and share that gift, I knew that I was going to be able to teach. Um, cause some people can be really, really gifted at painting, but they might not be able to explain things well. Um, but thankfully I've been able to do both and share it with you all. Um, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not necessarily new at teaching. I've been doing it for, um, six years, at least with, um, acrylic paints, but I've been teaching dance longer than that with my husband. And then, um, just painting in general, I don't know. I grew up with my mom painting on and off. Um, so I've always been like around painting. Um, I didn't really pick it up until college though, but I was a ceramics minor and a theater major. So it was very not painting related. I mean, I, I did paint on like my ceramics. I always went that route versus just glazing. I would like make sculptures and paint on them and like I would make Bambi and like different things, um, like figurines and stuff like that, which was a lot of fun. But yeah, so I've been painting for a while. Um, <laughs> But yeah, um, hi from New York, so psyched to paint, we're happy to have you um, from Indiana. I don't know if I can stay for the entire lesson today, if not I plan to check out the replay. Yes, you can always, always, you can always stop and then check out the replay after. No worries. I know the timing is, the timing is so weird because everyone is from everywhere. Um, if you're on the east coast, you're starting a little later, um, depending on how far away you are. And I know some people will start painting at like 10 because they're like really far away, but yeah. Yep. Um, I think I have all my paints out. Um, I was going back and forth on whether or not to use some of the other Hippie Crafter paints that I have that are like, per they would be perfect for this. If I was just painting this on my own, I would definitely use them because like, I have like this cool gray color that's literally the, co the color of the sky. But since I know not everybody has those colors, I want to be able to teach this is how you make that color sort of thing. So um, we will be doing that. But I love anyone who's been painting with me for a while knows I love palette knife glasses. So, oh, and actually, let me show you. You guys will get a sneak peek because I'm not going to show this in the actual gloss. So I've been prepping my classes and like pre-recording them. So I think this is going to be either, I think it's in September because I'm like pre-recording stuff. So you guys will still be able to paint um, every two weeks. But this is what I painted. It's a palette knife class. I don't know if you can really see the detail on this. How fun is that? But yeah, a little sneak peek. Um, but yeah, that's coming in, I think it's in September. Um, but yeah, um, I'm visiting in St. Pete with materials except a palette knife. Uh, could I view this video at a later date? Absolutely. Um, I also have, um, I also have supplies in the description if you want the exact palette knives that I have. Um, it comes with a kit of five and I use this little one all the time to mix paint. Um, it's so helpful. I use it all the time, like almost every single class I do, regardless of whether or not I'm painting with palette knives, I use it to mix like large sums of paint and it's really helpful. I don't know why I didn't have this before. I just, I didn't, I didn't know how magical it was <laughs> to not waste your paint in brushes and things like that. So, um, it comes with two other ones that are like maybe like this size, but maybe a little bit longer. There's a couple for like making, anyways. Um, I use these three all the time. Um, and that's in the a link in the description. Um, I either have my Amazon shop where you can see like everything that I recommend. Um, or I think I will have the actual link for that kit. Now I'm second guessing myself, but if you click the Amazon shop one, it's just amazon.com slash shop slash Samantha Anderson artist. Um, you'll see all the supplies that I recommend and that kit is in there. And I'm actually giving away 
um, I'm giving away one of those kits tonight um, for all my patrons who support me. Um, so if you're a patron, you might get one of these. If you don't already have one, you can always choose something different. But um, What size canvas? I am using an 11 by 14 canvas, but honestly, you can use whatever you want. Um, I would say use maybe not a square canvas because it'll cut off some of the like the horizon if that makes sense but um, I would just say I'm sorry if you can hear noises the um, fire station behind us is doing something with their machines and stuff but um, love flowers it's beautiful it's great. yeah I'm really excited for that class um, for Austin, Texas, joining for the first time. Hello. Welcome. Yeah, let me know if this is your first time joining. I love, I love hanging out with, um, just people who are just joining. Um, if you are new to the channel, um, make sure to, um, like, subscribe, do all that sort of stuff. Um, if you hit the bell notification, it will, um, you'll get notified when I go live. So, um, let's say you forget that I'm doing a class and it'll pop up that, hey, I'm here. Um, and then you can be like, oh, I forgot. And then you can come be with us. Or at least come say hi when I'm live. Cool, we have a lot of newbie, newbies. Newbies to the channel. Well, I am super thankful for everyone who has subscribed this far. Um, I think there's, I, I only have like 30% of people who watch me are actually subscribed, which is, I'm so thankful for all of you. Um, but any liking or anything like that, subscribing and stuff like that, it does help other people see. Um, other people see and um, join and stuff like that so they can join in the fun. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, um, all my classes are on YouTube, but I create events on Facebook um, and have like, I will post in there with materials and updates and things like that. So if you um, are on Facebook and would like to, uh, there's two things. I have a Facebook page, which is where I post um, my events for like future events. I don't think I have anything currently up there. Um, I need to make a few more events for the next two that I have. Um, for next month, which are already on my YouTube, they're already live, you know, scheduled or whatever. Um, but if you're on Facebook, uh, if you like and follow that, I think it's just follow now. They took out the likes. It's just follow. So if you follow that, you'll get notified whenever I post a new event um, or other things that might come up. And then I also have a Facebook community. So that artist community is for posting your, your work after class. Um, posting Patreon work or art challenges and anything related to anything I teach and things like that. So if you ever did like a past class that I did like maybe a year ago, you could go in there and still share it with me. Like it doesn't have to be right after class. It can, it can be a past class. Um, I always love seeing all of your work and it's really exciting to me, especially since I can't, it's not like a normal class where I'm in person and I take a picture of everybody and I can see everybody's because um, that really is rewarding to see everybody's masterpieces that you you know you helped create um, but yeah so that's that's kind of the idea and the community behind it um, so let me I'm not sure let's see let me post a little I'll send a link for the um, at least the Facebook community I'll post a link real fast Let's see. Okay. So that is that. Um, congrats on having another baby and best wishes. Yes. Thank you. Do you need a traceable? Um, you don't need one. I do have one available in my Patreon. So if you are a patron um, or you want to become one and support the channel, um, or even if you want to support and you don't want a traceable, that's fine too. You can become a patron. Um, I have traceables for literally all of my classes, um, all of my live classes. So I won't be using one for this one because 
I think when it comes to nature and something like this, I think it's okay not to, you know, um, but for anyone who would like a traceable and is not sure about where to put their rocks um, or with a horizon line or anything like that and you would like a traceable, I do have that available in my Patreon right now. Um, so you can just pop on there, make an account, subscribe, whatever, um, and then it'll be on there. And I can actually grab that link as well if you would like it. Um, but yeah, I, I do classes, um, or I do, um, traceables for all my live classes. And I want to say most of my Patreon classes, because sometimes I do want to teach you guys how to look at a picture and be able to replicate it. Um, but for most of those, I also provide the traceable. Let me just grab this link real fast. Okay, seascape with pallet knife rocks, traceable. Okay, so there's the link, there's the direct link for the traceable. Again, you don't have to use it. Um, I will be teaching, um, I will be teaching it without the traceable. Um, but for anyone who's just, you know, they don't want to have to worry about getting proportions right, or they're, you know, they're uncomfortable with that, traceables for you um, and it also does help support the page too um, and support me and my family hello from like said hi Janet hello hello Janet are you painting tonight or are you just hanging out I love that I'm being able to recognize those who um, are on quite a lot with me and like I know that paint with me and that's really fun to be like, oh, I know that, that name, I know that name, I know you guys. <laughs> um, yay, painting. Um, how often do you do your classes? I teach once a week on Facebook, um, or not Facebook, on YouTube. I teach every other Monday um, at the same time, same place. Um, and that is for free. I do that live. And then for my Patreon, um, for the magenta tier and above, I do extra classes. So I do exclusive Patreon classes, the content you guys get to have influence on, on what I paint, um, and how we paint it. Sometimes I'll say, Hey, do you guys want to paint this or this? And you'll choose oh, we want this, and then you'll get to choose whether or not it's a palette knife class or a normal class or just things like that. Um, so it's a lot of fun because you guys get to, um, you guys get to choose what I paint. So that's a really fun um, community that we have over on Patreon. Um, so I do that um, on the off weeks of my live classes on Friday. So I have a Monday live class and then next week I will have a Friday tutorial. Um, where do you purchase easels? I purchased all of mine. Um, if you're if you're talking about the, the like the A-frame one that I know that Janet, I know that you were using um, at one point, it um, I bought those at Aaron Brothers a long time ago. But there's the same kind on Amazon, and I have that linked in my shop. The one that I use, um, I also got from Aaron Brothers, but I'm pretty sure I found one very close. It's a standing easel, but you could also put it on a um, a desk like mine is right now and it's got like drawers and things like that um, I never use the drawers because all of the paints that I use are like in these giant bo like bottles or not bottles um, in the giant tubes because I'm a paint teacher so I have lots of paint um, so I never use those things but it's really handy for if you have like the small little ones that you keep um, you, it has a drawer for all of that all of your you can keep all of your um palette knives and supplies and brushes in there and things like that so um yeah so if you want any any of the I think I have three or four listed on my Amazon shop we're going from like the basic a-frame um easel to like the ones that kind of fold up and have drawers um and then I also have mine on there which is a standing easel which is really great if you want to take it somewhere and paint while standing. Why not? 
Um, I, I used to teach a lot standing up, so that's why um, I ended up getting one of those, because I needed to be able to stand and teach. But yeah, that's listed. listed uh, if, if it's not listed down below, I think mine might be listed down below. Um, but just a regular easel, you'll find that on my Amazon shop, which is a link in the description. We have about six more minutes, so if you have any questions um, up until now, please make sure to let me know, um, and I can answer them before we get started. I usually try to get all of our like talkity talks out before class, so I'm not like rambling during class, which I feel like I'm pretty good at not doing, but I'm also pregnant and forget things, and you know, it happens. Um, brushes, palette knives. As I was saying early, earlier, if you are using a palette knife, grab yourself an extra paper towel because we will be wiping off the palette knife with it. And thankfully we're only, you know, for those of you who are unsure about using a palette knife or afraid of using a palette knife because you've never done it before, take a big breath. It's okay. Um, we're really only using them for the rocks and adding texture to the rocks. So I feel like this is a pretty good introductory class to a palette knife class because it's not, we're not, you know, we're not using a palette knife for the entire thing. It's mostly brushes, mostly everything is brushes. Um, but you could use a palette knife for, say, the clouds or the water. You could use it for the whole thing. Um, but we're just going to be using it for the rocks because I love palette knives and I know that I was afraid to use one when I first started using it because it's like I don't know how to use this but it gets better I promise and now it's one of my favorite things to use so who did the um the turtle one who did the turtle actually it's right it's right there who did the turtle one because we used palette knives in that one and I feel like it was very like well I did I didn't like advertise it but I used it and I thought it just added so much to it. And then for patrons, we did the koi fish um, last Friday. We did the koi fish, and I used a palette knife in that one. That one had a lot of texture, and that was like so fun. Yeah, I loved doing the turtle. It came out so well. It came out really well. Sarah, what are you referring to? What are cute? Those are cute. The two here? I don't know. It's like awkward because it's like... It's not mirrored for me. I think I'm just a sucker for like animals. As you can see, there's like an owl and a horse and a butterfly. And there's just... There's all sorts of stuff back there. I have multiple turtles and fish. Um, I did, but my palette knife is plastic. I don't really like like it when I get to one. Yeah, I had a plastic one. I don't even know if where it is. I disowned it. <laughs> um, I yeah, I had a plastic one that came with a kit a while ago. I think I got it from Grumbacher or something like that. But um, I used it like once, and I was like, this is awful and I did not like it at all um so then that's why I bought these and they're like flexible and like and they're thin I feel like they're really durable you can tell I've used I've used um this one a lot because you can tell the uh the sheen on it is not quite there anymore because I'm a fan of, like, making sure that there's not a ton of paint on my handles so that I know when I get paint on there. And I'm not just, like, you know, putting it on my canvas on accident. So I, like, I, like, rub it off. So, but that's okay. 
it's well loved, right? <laughs> Uh, just join apologies if it's been discussed before, but for these types of paintings, do you use acrylic in the tube, which seems to be thicker, or the fluid ones in the bottles? I use the tubes. However, the ones I have right now are in bottles, but it's not the fluid acrylics. Um, so there's a difference between soft body acrylics, um, and what's the other word for it? Full body, full body acrylics. Um, so that's the difference between what you're talking about. Um, there's full body acrylics, which typically comes in the tubes. I have some over here. And you're talking about these. These are full body acrylics. Um, they typically come in tubes. Um, and the ones in the bottles are, t are, are um, they're fluid and they're soft body acrylics. Um, you can use them. Um, but for specifically for palette knife classes, you want that thickness. Um, thankfully, like you won't have to worry about it for this class because we're really just using a little bit of it um, for the very end for texture. So if you don't have, you know, full body acrylics, that's fine. Um, but it does last a lot longer than the fluid, like the craft um, acrylics um, because it's thicker and you, then you water it down. So it's, you know, it's, um, maybe I should do it like a video of just using, like using one and using the other for the same painting and like showing you the difference. Um, but yeah, it's all about preference, but if you want better types of paint, I would get the thicker, thicker ones. I'm thinking about getting metal knives. Might invest in a couple for a couple paintings. I would, Lynn. I would. They are they're very nice. Um, I love them. I use them all the time. Okay, um, that is the end of our chat. So I will see you on the other side. Hello, hello. Welcome to another painting class. Um, I am excited to get started and paint. Um, welcome for anyone who is just joining us. Um, say hi in the comments. Let me know um, that you're here, who you're painting with, where you're painting from. Um, we're going to wait just a few minutes for everyone to get in here and get ready. Um, thanks for everyone joining for the, um, for the welcome chat. So we're going to go over supplies real fast and there's not a whole lot of supplies um, that are different than what we normally use. So I have my acrylic paint and I'll go over colors in a second. I have my paper towel, my water. I do have an extra paper towel. Um, if you're using a palette knife, I would suggest grabbing an extra one um, because you'll need it to wipe off. Um, your you'll need it to wipe off your palette knives um, and by the, but by the time we get to the palette knives your other paper towel might already be soiled um, so grab an extra one just in case um, and then I am using a an 11 by 14 canvas for anyone who is wanting to know um, I'm using a stretched canvas so that means I have bottom top and sides um, I have my kit of brushes, my handy dandy brush kit, which all of the supplies that I use are linked in the description below um, and or are on my Amazon shop. And then the acrylic paints that I'm using are full body acrylic paints from Hippie Crafter with the exception of my white because I ran out of my Hippie Crafter white. But yeah, hello everyone um, from Texas, Ontario. Toronto, welcome. Okay, so for the colors, I'm going to be using um, essentially your primary colors, dark brown, black and white. The exact colors that I'm using um, is just primary red. Um, this one is specifically scarlet, um, but it's pretty much primary red. Um, 
medium yellow, phthalo blue, and then I'm using raw umber, which I think in the description, I think I copy and pasted. I don't know if I changed it on the YouTube. I think it says umper. I think my dyslexia got in the way and I put a P and not a B and somebody pointed it out and was like, what color is raw umber? <laughs> I'm like, umber. Um, so it's raw umber. It's, it's dark brown. Any brown that you have would probably be fine. Um, and then black and white. Do you tape the sides of the canvas? Um, I don't. I paint the sides. I would suggest if you have kids or you just don't want to deal with the sides, you can definitely tape it and that will save you time. Um, and paint. It's up to you. Totally whatever your preference is. Um, but those are the colors that I'm using. If you don't have those exact colors, that is okay. You could use ultramarine blue. Um, if you don't have red, that's okay. You could use orange instead. Um, the red is mostly to tint certain things. Like there's a like the tiniest bit. There's kind of like a cream color, cream orangish color in the clouds. We're gonna be using it to make our sand color. Um, so just get like a red or an orange. If you don't have exact colors, that's fine. Um, and then just whatever yellow. A lot of uh, most of this painting is going to be your, like your blues and your browns to be honest um, and then we'll be making our green with our blue and our yellow tinting that with brown that sort of thing um, yeah and then your black and your white hello Donna hi welcome welcome okay so those are the paints that we'll be using as for the palette knives um, I have a couple I have a couple things um, do we put the colors on our palette knife now? No, not yet. Um, I still have a couple announcements and I don't want them to dry. We'll be putting them on as we go, um, so that they don't dry before we get to them. Okay. Um, these are the palette knives that I have that I will be using. Um, these all come in one kit of five. Um, and I will be using the smallest three for the most part. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be using this one. I like this one because it's wider, um, wider. Um, but if you only have like the one that comes in the kit, um, I think it comes in most of the, it comes in the brush kit, it comes in um, the all-inclusive kits and things like that. If you just have this one, that is totally fine. But if you don't have any and you would eventually like to buy them, I would suggest getting the kit because it comes with the small one too, which um, I've stated before that it I use it in almost every single class to mix paint. Not even to use on my canvas, to mix paint. Because um, it saves my paint from getting all in, up in my brushes and then I rinse it out and there goes that paint. Um, coming in late, will I be able to rewatch this video later? Yes, all of my classes automatically save to my YouTube where you can watch whenever it, it is convenient to you. Um, I'm watching on my big TV screen. Looking good. Nice. <laughs> I'd say that that's the best, that's the best way to do it. Cause then you can see everything so well. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I believe, um, let me. Let me go over some announcements real fast, and then we'll get to um, we'll get to painting, okay? So for announcement one, um, on Friday for my Patreon, we painted these lovely little guys. Um, so this was a palette knife class. So if you've never done palette knife class. Um, well, one, you're doing one now, but it's just like a little bit of palette knife. But this one, um, if you really look at the, like the detail on here, like this is really thick. Um, and there's a lot of palette knife stuff. So if you enjoy palette knife classes, like I do, um, definitely consider coming a becoming a patron because I love to spoil my patrons with my palette knife classes because um, I know not everybody likes them um, but also you guys get to choose what I paint um, and I know a lot of you have been wanting a koi fish painting and I decided to 
add that element to it. So that is available in my Patreon um, right now for the magenta tier and above. And then for my patrons, it is actually time for um, it is time for a hi Gloria, welcome, welcome. Um, every month, I do a um, a Patreon giveaway where I just want to bless you guys and bless everyone who supports me. Um, so I give away something. Um, and this time, let's see, it froze. You still there? Okay, let me know if you can hear me. I don't know if it's going. Okay, I will just go ahead and do this. Um, okay, let me go ahead and spin this. This is for all my patrons who have signed up to receive a gift. And it's essentially just when you sign up, you have your address in there. And it is Lisa, Lisa Gowan. Alrighty, so Lisa, um, you will be able to, I'm giving away this palette knife kit. So if you already have a palette knife kit, that is totally fine. Um, it's not letting me go back. That's weird. Um, it's not letting me go back to my other, hey. Give me one second. There we go. Whoa. There we go. All right. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Um, but thankfully, we can't. We're back. We're back. Okay. Um, so um, I will send that off to you. I'll make sure that um, you don't already have it. And yeah, thank you for supporting me. And um, I just, I love blessing my patrons and um, being able to share that community with you. So. Um, congrats on that. And I think with that said, we are ready to get started. Does anybody have any questions before we get started? We already went over supplies. Um, yes, you can watch this later. Um, I think all the supplies are listed in the description below. Does anyone have any questions? I'll give it a couple, I'll give it a minute while I get the rest of my stuff out. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first couple colors that we are going to be using is just our blues, um, our yellow, and white. Um, so for the background, essentially when we want, whenever we're looking at a photo, um, or even, even a painting that we want to replicate, um, I want you to look at it in layers. And I know for some, you might be thinking like, I don't even know what you're talking about. Um, but look at it in layers. So the furthest thing back is what? The sky. So we're going to start with the sky, move forward one layer. That next layer is the clouds. And then we have the greenery with the trees. And then we have kind of the water and the sand all kind of in one layer. And then we have the rocks on top of that. So being able to break it down into layers will really help us um, break it down into steps and help us better understand what we need to do, okay? So we're gonna take our phthalo blue, our white, and our yellow. And we're going to start there. Now, phthalo blue is very dark, so we're not going to need a lot of this. Um, so let me just put this here. That's my phthalo blue. I'm going to grab out my white. And the first thing we're going to do, we are going to mix together um, a bunch of white with this blue. And then... And then we have our yellow. Like a hair tickling me. Hi, 
Hi, Diana. Nice to see. Oh, I was going to say nice to see you again, but I can't see you. It's nice to see me. <laughs> it's nice to hear from you. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little dab of yellow because we are not going to need a lot. We'll probably need some later um, to tint, you know, the sand and things like that. Um, but, okay. I'm going to grab my smallest palette knife to mix my colors. If you do not have a small palette knife that you would like to um, use to mix your colors, grab the smallest round brush that you have. So whatever small round brush you have, um, that is what you're going to use to mix your paint. Um, so I'm just going to grab, let's see, I'm going to take some of this white and put it aside just so I'm not mixing all of my white. But a lot of this is going to be blue. So I'm just taking a little tiny bit of blue and I'm going to mix it into my white. Because this is such a dark color, I'm not going to need a whole lot of it to really taint my blue. Does that make sense? set some of that aside and then make it a little bit darker because a lot of the a lot of the color on this side of the canvas is very I don't know it's a it's a little bit darker so I'm just going to mix that in but I did save some of that lighter blue um I watched your ballerina painting it was adorable yeah that one was fun that was a palette knife class um so that was a lot of fun so trying to do clouds. Clouds are hard, you know. Clouds take a lot of practice. And I think part of it is honestly being able to make the color that we see and not the color that we think is there. So for instance, in this specific painting, we know that clouds are white, right? Clouds are white. But when we are looking at clouds in a photograph, that have sunlight and sunset and all these different colors that are on them, we can't just paint them white. We have to look at the color that they are and paint that. So there is a little bit of gray, a little bit of yellow, a tad bit of reddish orange in here. This kind of like a peach color. Like honestly, if you look, there, there's like a peach color in the clouds that's also relatively the same color as not only the sand but it's also the same color that's on the right side of the rocks that the sun is hitting so you can start to see oh these things are the same color and you can start to i don't know color match a little bit better and train your eye to see what's actually there and not what color we know it to be I will say that anytime you're replicating, you're replicating a picture, let me just start off this. I should have said this before. Anytime you are replicating a picture, like taken from real life, it should take you hours, like a long time of hours of if you want to make it look exactly like that picture. This is a two hour class. Um, so give yourself a break. It's probably not gonna look exactly like the picture. I will do my best to teach you how to do some of these techniques. Um, and I might give you a couple different cloud techniques and just different things like that. So you can create your own clouds within it. Um, but just try not to get frustrated when it doesn't look like the picture. Um, because often, like we are using this picture as a inspiration for our painting not to exactly replicate it and I hope that makes sense um, so with that don't get frustrated if it's like it's not like the picture or it's not like the teachers or however however you're thinking um, just let go now 
and enjoy the process because I'm sure that you will learn something from it, okay? All right, so I have my blue and I kind of have like this lighter blue that I created and then my white. I'm gonna mix together um, a little bit of my yellow with this white. There's a little, I have a little white thing right here. And I think even this yellow should have a little bit more red in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab, I'm gonna grab my red. And this is just a little snippet at what my brain does. Um, I'm really into finding the exact color of what I wanna use and that sort of thing. Um, so when I'm, when I'm looking at a color and I'm like, oh, it looks like it needs more yellow or red or whatever, I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make that color. So I'm just gonna dab like the tiniest bit of red. There's barely any red on there. And I'm gonna mix it with this color. And I'm just pre, I'm pre-mixing, um, this the yellow color that's gonna go in the sky just a little bit because there's not a lot of it but if I were to just put you know plain yellow on that it would be very bright which if you want a super bright you know if you want it to be bright that's totally fine too because it's your painting it doesn't have to look exactly like the picture Okay, I think I have my colors. So that's vaguely what I'm going for. I'm going for like a light blue, a yellowish kind of peachy color. Um, and then we'll come back and put our clouds on top of that, okay? So I'm going to grab my large filbert brush. If you don't have a filbert brush, you can use um, just any flat brush that you have. That's fine too. I tend to like using filbert brushes because I feel like it keeps... Um, it keeps, it, it uses less, um, it does less lines when I'm trying to blend things because it's round, not, it doesn't have like corners to it. Um, so that's what I like using. How do you keep your paint from not drying out? Um, I use it quickly. I don't typically have, I'm in a bedroom. Um, I'm not outside. I don't have fans on. Um, it's fairly cool in here. If it's hot, windy, dry out, they're going to affect your paints. Um, but I use things, I, I also, um, you can tell that um, I don't have my blackout, I don't have my, my brown out yet, because I'm not using those yet, okay? So try not to put out your paints that you're not using yet. Um, take them out when you're going to use them, because also, you might think you're going to use a color, and then later decide, oh, I actually am not gonna use that color, but now you've already put it out and you might waste that paint. So try not to take out your paints unless you know you're gonna use them um, or you're about to use them, okay? So I'm going to grab a little bit of water, make sure that it's not dripping wet, which I can just dab on my paper towel. And I'm going to start off with this bright color here with this yellow and figure out where I want my horizon. Okay, so my horizon is about the top third, I would say. And I'm just going to put that on there. Then I'm gonna go on with my white. Right, this is gonna move if I don't tighten it. Um, I'm gonna go in with my white and I'm gonna blend that into white. And I'm gonna go at a slight angle because you'll notice, you'll notice that the sky is kind of tilted when it comes to the color shifts. I'm gonna go in with that kind of lighter blue that I had.
Uh, the picture we are looking at is a picture. It's not a painting. We are replicating. We are using it as inspiration. So right where these are touching, I want a little bit more white there because as soon as I put, as soon as I start pulling that together, it's going to turn green, which theoretically in some sunsets there, there is green. And I think that that's totally fine. But if you don't want your green in your sky, don't blend those together. You can rinse out your brush, grab your white and put white in the middle. Go back in with your white, pull your white down, then you can wash off your brush, then take more white and brush up into that blue. And that will kind of help mitigate that green on there. And then of course, don't forget to paint the sides if you plan on doing that. But now that we have, um, now that we have that, I can start going into this blue, with a little bit more of that dark blue. And because this is still wet, it's going to, um, it's going to blend together. something on my canvas. And you'll just slowly start adding that darker color. Let me get the top here real fast. If you're if you're seeing a lot of your canvas texture through your paint, it means one of two things. One, you need more paint and you're skipping out on your paint. Don't be afraid to put too much paint on your canvas. If you're using acrylics, like put it on there, you can always move it around and blend it in. Um, or you just need to touch more water. Water helps um, kind of liquefy, especially if you're using um, your thicker paints, your tube paints, your full body acrylics. If you're using full body acrylics, um, it's going to be thicker so you need you do need to water it down just a little bit I just I usually will just dip the corner of my brush when I grab some water when I grab more paint and that's all you need but it does help get um, in all those creases And once you get, once you get all of your, your blue on here, I'm not too worried about this because this is going to be kind of covered up, um, with, um, with clouds. But if you wanted to blend that a little bit, rinse out your brush and you could just blend that a tad bit, just so it's not a harsh line. Um, but since this is all still wet, if I wanted to darken up these edges, I could grab my just pure phthalo blue and darken up the edges a little bit. And the sky is, the sky has a natural gradient when it comes to sunsets. So I feel like you can never go wrong with a gradient. Just, I would just say make sure not to go over too far because whatever's on the right side has probably started to dry already and you don't want to mess that up, okay? 
You don't want to mess up your pretty blending that you've already done. All right. So the next thing we are going to do is we're going to start placing in some of our clouds. Now, I want you to think of the clouds in three, step, three separate steps. You have the base color of it, which is like your medium tone, which is kind of like that bluish gray that you see. Um, and then you have your darks and your lights or your, your shadows and your highlights. Um, can you use water to reactivate a, pa a paint dry? Um, like a, like dry paint. I would say yes and no. If you're trying to take paint off, if you're trying to take paint off of um, if it's something that you're working on, like for instance right now, I could theoretically take off some of that yellow paint because it's not fully cured yet. It's not like absolutely. It's like a little bit tacky um, it's like I could take it off um, I wouldn't say I'm going to if something dries on my palette and I try to reactivate it's just gonna clump up and it's not it's not gonna work um, so it it depends on what you what you mean Sarah by like reactivate dry paint um, when it gets in a tacky stage you you want to just leave it alone because if you add water to it it will it'll take it off the canvas so it depends on the purpose that you're you're trying to um, do that with um, Diana can I refine the ballerina paint knife video um, yes all of my all of my classes uh, stay on my YouTube so I have a playlist that um, it's called I don't know it's just called live replay classes something like that um and it's um they're all all of my live classes are in there um you can also go to my artist community and go to the albums page and i literally have every single class i've ever done online whether it's whether it's youtube patreon um or anything like that um I have an album for it and you can just click on the album and then click on the link that is like in the link the album description um, YouTube name Samantha Anderson artist That's me um, okay let's get to the clouds so I'm gonna take this blue color that I have a little bit of and I'm going to add a tiny bit of black to it um, and when I say tiny amount, I mean the tiniest bit because black will black will ruin any color that you're trying to mix it into if you put too much. Um, see, how do you use white and not get the other colors? Wait, then it will mix. How do you use white and not get other colors on it? Um, I when I when I originally put the white on here. Because I knew I was going to be mixing it with blue and um, and yellow, I put two separate little puddles of white, and then I put a third one over here. Um, so a lot of times, I will put separate like piles of white, so that that doesn't happen. Um, but depending on the color that I'm using it for, that like if I'm mixing you know a green color and I'm adding white to it but there's a little bit of yellow in the white I'm okay with that yellow getting in the green if that makes sense because yellow is in green but if I'm mixing a purple then I might try to avoid the yellow if that makes sense because that's the opposite colors it makes brown I hope that answers your question um, so I'm gonna use my palette knife grab the tiniest bit of black because I want to dull down the cloud color but I still want it to be in that kind of blue you know mixture 
which is why I'm using the blue as a base. I'm going to add a little bit of white. So it's not as dark. Okay, so I'm just slowly adding this black in here, little bits at a time. And this is going to be the base for my clouds. It's a little bit of a grayish blue. And then I'm going to take a little bit of that and add a little bit more black to it. Maybe a tad bit more blue, just to darken it up a little bit. And this is going to be my dark, my dark version of it. My my shadows. So I have kind of like this misty blue, grayish color. Um, don't have any black. What could I sub what could be substitute? Um, you could use brown, like a burnt umber. I mean, a, sorry, a raw umber. Um, if you mix raw umber with like blue and purple, like your really dark colors, it'll make pretty much a black. Um, I would use brown if you like dark brown if you don't have if you don't have black kind of show you so brown is really good for doling out a color black is typically good for graying out a color so there's they are used differently um, but they can both be used to darken darken it um, so I would maybe add blue to help darken it but that's gonna make it vibrant so then I would add brown to dull it out if you don't have black um, yeah, so those are the two colors that we'll use there. And then we'll need our bright color. I feel like this is good. This light yellow color that I have um, is pretty close to the color that I want. I think I want it just a little bit less yellow there. So I'm going to add white. Um and like a smidge of this like blue color and I know it's like oh it's gonna turn green but just trust me it's not enough that it turns green I think I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of red to make it a little bit more orangey Which, if you don't know, red, blue, and yellow make brown. So adding those three colors into this make it a little bit more tan. Because the red cuts out that green. If it is too green. Alright. If you guys ever need like help on a color, like, oh, my color is looking to this color, um, let me know and I can help like direct you in the right direction. Okay. All right. So I have my three colors. I have my bluish gray, which was the, the sky color of blue that I grayed out with um, that I grayed out with white and black. Oh, thank you, Diana. 
I really appreciate it. Um, so I, I grayed it out with black and white. Um, so it's a, it's like a tad bit darker than this. Um, and then I have this darker color that I pulled from this blue color and I just, I have coffee now too. Um, and then I added black and a little bit of blue to that to kind of darken it up. If you wanted to add like a touch of red to this to kind of give it that purple tone, that's also another way that you could um, darken it up. I don't remember who was asking. Um, my, Maya, Mamiya, wait, May, there we go, May. Um, that's another way you could darken it up is to add your red, which I guess is the same as adding the purple. Um, but it's kind of got that purple tone. And we're not going to need a lot of this, so you don't need to, you don't need to mix like your whole palette of paint together. And then we have like kind of like our tannish yellow. So we have those three colors. Those are the colors of our clouds. Okay. First thing we're going to do, um, you can use your small filbert. You can use a round brush. Um, you can use a bigger brush if you would like to. Um, whatever you would like to use, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, I'm going to go ahead and wet my brush just a little bit. I'm going to take my medium my medium color. I'm going to start over here on the right. And I'm just going to wiggle my brush and start adding this, okay? It's going to look silly for right now because we're using the medium tone and a lot of the stuff over here is darker. But we're just going to start. Most of these clouds are kind of flat on the bottom. So I'm just going to wiggle my brush. I don't have like a ton of paint on my on my brush. I'm I'm kind of starting with a, a bunch of paint over here and as I use that paint then I'm gonna come up here and start adding these lighter clouds. The lighter fluffier ones that don't have a lot of um, the, it doesn't have a lot of substance to it. And you'll see that they'll just start appearing. Um, notice what I'm doing with my brush. I am just wiggling it. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Kind of going in circles at some points. Um, I'm a new subscriber. I'm not sure if you mentioned what paint you use because I really want high quality paint. I use student grade paint because honestly, that's what I can afford and that's what you can afford. And that's, I'm just a big believer on using what my students use and being, you know, diligent with saving money. Um, so I use student grade acrylics. And there are plenty of good brands that are student grade. So um, right now I am using mostly um, professional artist acrylic paint that is from Hippie Crafter. Um, a while ago they sent me um, they sent me um, like a pack of them a while back, and I'm still working through them, which is why I, I mention them a, a lot because they sent it for me for free and I'm super thankful um oops but yeah so that's that's that but normally I would just buy whatever's on sale at um at like Hobby Lobby or whatever your local craft store is um I do get the student grade. I don't get the really cheap stuff though um, because it just lasts longer when you don't do that. 
Okay, so for the stuff over here, um, I am going to go more in a little bit of a line. I'm still going to rough up the top of it. You can see I'm just pulling my brush and kind of moving against the grains of the brush. take a little bit of this blue and mix it in with this green or sorry mix it in with the yellow and use that for my base over here because it is a little bit on the yellower side of things and on the palette it looks green but trust me that when you start adding it to the canvas, it's not going to look so green. It's going to look perfectly in place. Yeah, it's really up to you what you want to use. I would love to do a video of me like trying out like different paints. Notice that the the um, if we if we are trying to kind of replicate some of this a little bit more, um, one notice that my clouds do not look exactly like theirs. Um, that's okay. I like my clouds. <laughs> um, but when the clouds start to come over on the right side, they start kind of going up a little bit because of the angle of like the camera and things like that and it just adds a little bit of dimension so I'm still working with that base um, gray color but I still want some of the sky peeking through so I think I'm gonna be done with that base color yeah Diana that's mostly that's what I did before COVID. Um, I, I had a ton of paint left over from like all my painting classes. So I've just been going through all of that, but that's what I use. I use the master's touch because like every other week or whatever, every two weeks they go on sale and I just, I load up, I used to load up on stuff whenever they were, um, cause I would often go there to get canvases. So I would just load up on stuff that I was low on and, you know, save money that way. All right, so now I'm pretty much gonna do the same thing except with the darker color. I'm gonna go in and find where I want those darker sections, which is gonna be the underside. And I'm gonna start adding dimension to these clouds. At some time, some points, I'm going back and forth. 
Other times I'm like dabbing a little bit. Just know, try to keep your dark, try to keep your darks on the left side. Try to keep your darks on the left side and more of your highlights on the right. Because you'll notice, try to, if you look at the, um, if you look at the clouds on the left side, the dark is underneath and the highlights are on the top because they're kind of on the side. When you look at the clouds on the right side, the highlight is actually underneath and the dark parts are on top because you're closer to the light source, which is the sun. So my dark parts are actually gonna be on the top over here, not on the bottom. So try to think about where your light source is, where your light source is coming from and that will help you figure out where your lights need to be and where your darks need to be. On the really wispy ones that are over here, the small ones, you don't need a ton of dark, if at all. We'll just be adding those darks to, or like just the highlights to those. I'm going to rinse out my brush. Again, I'm just using a medium round brush for this. I'm going to go in with some of this highlight color. And I'm first going to test it on one of these and see if I like the, the look of it, okay? And see if I think it's the right color. So I'm looking at this and I think it's a little bit too... Um, yellow. So I'm going to go back in and add more red to it. More of that warm tone. Okay, let me try again. Now that I've kind of altered the color. And I like that a little bit better. There's just a little bit on the clouds over here. I'm just going to slowly start adding this. <laughs> clouds are hard. So if you're having troubles with your hearts, you're you, if you're having troubles with your clouds, you're probably not alone. Um, so at this point, I'm just adding little bits and pieces to everywhere where I feel like there should be some highlights to this.
Sometimes subtle is better. So if you feel like you're putting on too much paint and it's too bright, like rub it off on your paper towel. You'll see me do this often. Rub it off and then go back in and just dry brush it. So you're just kind of barely tinting it. Like that. Um, and I think I'm going to come back in with just some white because this right here is pretty, pretty bright just on the under, the undertow right here. And that's pretty much our clouds. Um, you could probably spend all day on these clouds. Like, no joke, so could I. Um, but we do have to get into the rest of our painting. Um, so there's that. You can always come back to, you're not putting anything over these clouds. So if you need to come back to them, you can always rewind and go back to it, okay? All right, we're gonna go ahead and make some green. And while we are making the green, um, I will go ahead and read some of these comments and answer any questions. So if you have any questions, put them in the description below. So we're gonna go ahead and make a green um, with our phthalo blue and yellow. So I'm just going to mix together this. And if you already have a green, that's totally fine. You can just use that. Um, Linda says, hi, how is everything with you? Your clothes are always so amazing. Oh, thank you. Uh, I can hardly wait to paint this in September. I'm making uh, my list. Yeah. Learn so much from watching. Yeah, of course. I love doing this, so... All right, so we're gonna make a pretty dark green for right now, um, and we'll add we'll add um, some low lights later. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is grab my filbert brush, and I'm just going to grab a little bit of brown with some of this green. It'll darken it up a little bit. And I'm going to figure out where I want this. So pretty much this whole section, we're just gonna block in this section with our green. So I'm going to take this green and I'm going to dab it on my brush. Um, that's going to loosen up the bristles and make it a little bit more like a stippler. And I'm going to do that for the top of this to give it that tree-like um, top because all of these are There's trees up all in here. Like that. 
couple trees poking up here. I'm going to grab a very small brush and grab just a little bit of this brown. Just so I can create a couple um, trunks. There's a couple other ones back here too, but I'm not going to worry about those. We're just going to, with our, our dark green, we're just going to put in a couple palm, palm fronds. And this is done with the small round brush. I'm just flicking out. So I'm flicking from the middle out. I'm just one stroke. like that and you can do it in a couple other places too a little bit of yellow to my green just to brighten it up a little bit maybe a tad bit of white and I'm gonna add some texture to to this right here just so it's not one solid color. rolling hills. So I just dabbed a little bit over here. You could even grab a little bit more yellow and give a little bit more if you wanted to. It's not the focus of our painting, so try not to spend too much time on it. Just enough detail for your eye to assume what's not there. <laughs> and you can always come back and add like little tiny details.
All right. So that's all that I'm going to do over there. Now we get to move on to a little bit more of the um, the sand. Um, someone's asking where they where you can post your paintings. Um, you can post your paintings in my Facebook artist community. Um, so that is just Facebook slash groups slash Samantha Anderson artist. Um, and that's where you can post any painting um, that you've done from my classes, my Patreon, um, or my artist classes um, or my art challenges in um, my Patreon. Yes, yeah, so the link was just posted. So I'm just going to go back in with my round brush. I'm just going to add a little bit of the same color that we used for the highlights, that kind of peachy color. And it kind of comes out right below it. Perfect. All right, so I'm going to tone this down just a little bit. Because by the time it gets over here, it is a little bit too bright. But we are ready to dive into our water. So let's go ahead and do that. Now our water consists of the same types of colors that we've been using. Um, so we'll probably use a lot of these same like sky colors and things like that. We might brighten it up a little bit. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take my sky color, get a little bit of water. I'm just gonna start with that as a base and then I can change it from there. And I'm trying to, I'm going to try to make my horizon as flat as I can make it, but I can always add, I, I am going to be adding those, um, kind of mountains on top of it. So if I need, if it's, if you can't make it straight and it's just bumpy the whole way through, um, you can always add mountains, a little, little bit of mountain on the whole thing and that's fine. Okay, so I think I need just a little bit more blue to this. And that part is a little bit lighter. So I'm going to go in with my dark over here, kind of where this wave is. get my white out because everything is brightening up just a little bit.
All right. So the water kind of comes out. It's about here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put this blue in. We will adjust it all a little bit later. This is very thin. It's pretty watered down. I'm just trying to get that kind of, that wash coat, that color on there so we can block it in. Um, and now I'm gonna kind of make this sandy color. So this is gonna be your brown. I need more than that. It's gonna be your brown, your white, and then we're gonna kind of change it from there. So I'm just mixing together my brown and my white. And I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow to it because it's looking a little bit um, blue. I think I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow and a little bit of red just to cut that blue. Um, I use, um, I'm using raw umber, which is a little bit darker than what you have. Um, yeah, you have like a chocolate brown, um, so you probably won't have to lighten it up as much as me. Um, or if you want to kind of cut the, the warm brown color, um, you can add a little bit of black to it. Added a tiny bit of red to mine. I think I cut too much of the yellow. And then I'm going to lighten it up a little bit more. This is a good color. I'm going to put it on my canvas and see how I like it after I rinse my brush out. It's a little bit too vibrant. So we're going to add so what I can do here is I can add more white, but then I'm also gonna add some black because that is going to gray it out. I'm just gonna cut some of that color. And that's a little bit better. I apologize if you can hear my my child screaming. She's really excited for whatever's on the TV right now. <laughs> She's like screaming. That's like her new favorite sound is like she just squeals in joy and it's very obnoxious, <laughs> but gotta love her. Um, yeah, that's, that's my little girl. It gets even worse when we put on George. Mm -hmm. 
Does anybody else have kids that love Curious George? Both my kids loved it, but she like squeals at anything George. Like we have a little figurine that's George. She squeals at that. Um, she squeals at her stuffed animal. She just squeals when she watches the show. <laughs> she loves George. So I'm just kind of filling in this whole area. Um, when you're doing this, you could even, to add texture to the sand, you could grab a little bit of this white. You could grab a little bit of this white and mix it in. Like, don't mix it in all the way like you know white's going this way all right so I'm going to be mixing this and as I go up I'm gonna mix it in with a little bit of this blue And if you still have some of that, um, some of that sand color, put a tip of it on your brush and you can blend that in so that it looks like it's a part of the sand. It's just not wet. And you'll just do a mix, you'll just do a mix of those browns and blues. Like I'm going to pull in a little bit more of that blue here. We can always add a little bit of highlights and the, the reflection of the water a little bit later. But we're just trying to get like those base colors. There's like a rock that comes out here, so I don't necessarily need to paint this. But you can if you want to, like. adding those little white streaks if you want to add those while it's still wet. about the reflection 
of this after we actually get um, whatever our rock is there, okay? So don't worry about that. We're just going to figure out where we want our rock. So I'm just going to kind of put this in because we have to finish we have to finish this back here before we um, before we put in our rocks. Thank you. All right. Um, Let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and take this dark blue with a little bit of this brown and I'm just gonna do the, the few um, mountains in the very background. So if you have a, a small round brush, I would suggest getting that. Or if you have a liner brush, you can also use that. Um, and with small brushes, small round brushes, you'll want to twist them as you are lifting off the canvas so that it, um, so that it, so that it, uh, it, brings all of the bristles together so you have a nice point. little jetty that comes out there or mountains whatever you want it to be okay so we have that let's go ahead and finish our water out here first So I'm going to remix some of this blue because what I was using here is a little bit too gray. At least I have it blocked so it's going to be easier to just kind of fill in the gaps. And I'm going to use my filbert. Grab some of this paint. Wipe it off so it's not soaking and paint. 
And I'm just going to add some of this out here. And I think even that I need a little bit more white. It's going to Now I'm going to take this dark color that I was using for the um, the background or the mountains and I'm just going to place that in here. Blending it down. I'm going to start adding some of these highlight colors. It's almost kind of got some of this peachy in there. Okay, let's figure out where our rocks are and then we can move on to that. I'm going to go ahead and rinse out my brushes, make sure they're all good to go, not sitting in paint or my water. Um, I'm going to grab my medium, my medium round brush. And I'm just going to block these in. I'm going to block them in with, let's see, my brown. I feel like that's a good blocking color. Because then I will have my shadows, my highlights, and then um, I should say I'll have my highlights and my lowlights, but then I'll also have the, like, the sun highlights. Okay. Now the thing about rocks is that they are nature and they're not in at any point one color or super smooth. Now there are rocks that are smooth for smooth, um, but that is not that is not these rocks. So 
So that's kind of this one. It's going to fill that in. kind of blocking in our colors right now. I think this one kind of comes up a little bit more. I get more brown because I did not get enough brown out. Um, I am adding just a little bit of a light coat on the tops of these just so I can see where where one starts and where the other stops. So you don't have to do that, um, but that's just for me. Um, do I sell my paintings also? Yes, I do. I don't have like a, a shop per se right now. Um, I am working on something because um, I hope to sell like other things too, like um, postcards and greeting cards and things like that, which I for the most part have set up. Um, but then I also want to sell my paintings. I mean, I do sell my paintings, but um, I don't have a shop right now. Um, but pretty much anything... 
Anything that I've painted live is for sale. A couple of them aren't available. Either I've given them away or, um, or they've sold already. Um, but if you're interested in buying something, definitely let me know. And I'll let you know whether or not it is um, still available. And then once you get your big rocks in there, um, there's probably about like five or six right here. Um, don't forget to put in all your little tiny ones. Um, and we kind of need to put in the small ones and stuff before we can start adding shadows and things like that. So just start adding them in little, little places here and there. They can come across as dots or full on like rocks. And remember that you can give them as much detail as you want or as little detail as you want. All right, so once you have the base in there, now we can start finishing up our ocean and then adding all the detail to our rocks and then we're done. Um, so we have about 20, 20 to 30 minutes um, to finish this. Uh, let's see. I think I'm gonna start by adding some highlight to my water, which can be done with your blue and your white and I'm just adding this in little tiny amounts I have barely any I have barely any um paint on my brush and anywhere where there's going to be just that reflection I'm going to start adding that in and I'm going in horizontal motions with the exception of down here, it's going to kind of be a little bit more um, it's going to be a little bit more in a um, stream type of setting.
The key with this is barely having any paint on your brush. I'm just going back and forth. Yeah, thank you for anyone who's subscribed um, during this class. I really appreciate it. And I'm just going to add a couple of highlights over here just so it's not one solid color. Alright, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, I'm going to focus more on uh, these highlights over here. So, it's just a little bit more streams. And you can add a little bit of that, if you still have that peachy color, you can add a little bit of that over here. I'm just gently adding it little by little. So I think I like all of this and I'm going to start putting in my different colors here. So there's a little bit more of sand color back here. So I'm just grabbing that same sand color that I was using over there. And don't worry about going over your rocks because that was just to place it in there. Um, it's not, you know, permanent or whatever, um, and you can come back over it and put them back in. But now we were, now we know where to put all of our, like, you know, low lights and stuff. Our shadows. Okay, so there's a little bit of some shadow here in this little crevice. And then there's a shadow that's over here. And I'm going to go in with my brown.
and I'm going to put this white and blue around it let me show you let me show what this is going to do so I put that blue behind it or like around it now I'm going to rinse off my brush and grab a bigger brush and I'm just going to blend it in a little bit. Take a little bit more of that. And by, by, by it being wet allows you to kind of blur it out. And what I'm doing here is because it's wet, I'm rinsing, I'm kind of drying off my brush a little bit and just taking this blue or whatever color is on the side and pulling it into that and then I'm I'm drying it off every single time I'm wiping off that color Just kind of adding what I see, same techniques. I just need to not forget to paint the side. All right, um, so that's a little bit of tip on that. If you have wetness around it, um, it'll help in making things blurry and things like that. So um, you can take as much time as you want on that because I know it's not necessarily the easiest, um, it's not the easiest technique. And I'm just going to add this little thing right here because that is the sun peeking through.
and you can even add that in a couple other places too or just the sun is peeking through and these are all details that like you don't have to do but they are the little details that make it look more realistic. Okay, now we are going to go ahead and move on to our rocks and getting all of that in here. Um, I am gonna add a tiny bit more detail just to this right here, only cause I feel like it was unfinished. Okay. Now I'm good. I think. <laughs> Said every artist everywhere. <laughs> I'm done. No, I'm not. I'm done. No, I'm not. I did forget to add some detail in here of that light. That light shimmery. Can't forget that. And you can also add it down here. Again, I'm just doing this in small strokes. With that light blue. Okay, now we can do the rocks. <laughs> okay, so there's a couple different things. Um, you're gonna be adding, we're gonna first be adding our low lights with our black, with our brush, and then the rest of it we're gonna be doing our palette knives. So um, you can do it all with your palette knife, but I like adding the highlights colors with the, um, with the palette knife um, because if you also have um, the black on there with your palette knife it's not necessarily dry and sometimes um, that can mix with it So I'm just going to add my low lights wherever um, I feel like my black should be. So just your really dark spots. Which is essentially anything on the left side. And this is also where you get to refine your rocks if you went over it at any point when you were adding in the rest of the details with your other things. There's not a whole lot of black on this one actually. It's really just here at the dark at the bottom. 
<laughs> I appreciate it. So I'm just adding all my blacks to this all. These probably could have just been done in black because they're so far away. Okay, so I just got one more rock back here. All right, I'm gonna rinse that out. Now we get to have the fun part um, with the First, I'm going to fix this. Okay. Oops. Come back. Oh. Um. So grab your palette knife, whatever whatever one you want to use. It doesn't really matter. Um. I would say if you are doing the tops of it. Um, depending on the shape of your rock, you'll probably want to use one of these. Um, but if you do have like a thicker top of the rock, like maybe this first one, um, then I would say use your thicker one, like your more flat one. Totally up to you, depending on your painting and your rocks, okay? So let's go ahead and mix together some of these colors. Um, so we just have, it's kind of like a... That, it's almost like that light blue that we've been using this whole time. Um, so I'm going to grab my white and mix it in with a little bit of that blue. Now the thing with palette knife painting is you do need a little bit more paint. Um, because... Um, because you're kind of you're grabbing it and then you're it's it's a, it's got to be a little bit thicker and 
Okay, so there's a little bit of that. And then the other color we're gonna need is that same kind of peachy color. So let me remix that a little bit. I'm gonna need some white. And then my yellow and my red. I think this will probably need to be even more orangey than before. Super technical term, orangey. -er. <laughs> you heard it here first. Okay. I'm gonna wipe this off. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna take some of this brown and I'm just going to give a little bit of texture to that first one. Okay. I'm going to move from back to front so that I don't mess up the rocks that I've done, you know, in front of it. I'm going to grab some of this. Let's see. We're going to do kind of this color. And I'm just doing small little strokes you want to say These ones are so far away, I don't know if you'll see much. Okay, so this blue does need to be a lot darker. Because it's very light compared to the black rock. I'm just using, you can use the side of it, um, you can use the tip of it, but try to keep it on the left side.
So I'm putting the the kind of the blue highlight on the top back. And then I'm adding that lighter color in the front. So yeah, you'll just keep working on these rocks until you get them however you like them. Um, and that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. Um, I feel like I could probably work on these rocks all day. And then I am going to come in with just a little bit of a dark brown as I wash because I feel like there should be, there should be a little bit um, of a shadow here. I'm just going to add that a little bit. To some of these other ones too. I'm not a fan of making horror paintings either. You are not alone. <laughs>
Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for all the compliments, guys. I really appreciate it. I'm just going to add more of these highlights to the back here. Well, I would love to see all of your renditions um, when you guys finish them over on my artist page. So make sure that you go over there and add yourself to that group. And then you can see everybody else's from that class too. And it's so fun. Thank you. I just forgot to paint the side, so, you know, typical me. Alright, I'm trying to think if, there, if there's anything else I want to add, um, other than I can't forget the ones over here. Just add a little bit of detail over here, you can't see much of them. What do you guys think? I think I'm done. I kind of want, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pull an audible. Um, I'm going to grab a toothbrush because I feel like there should be a little bit more like splattering. So let me just, yeah. Now I think I'm done. Um, before wrapping up, just give some dimensions to the trees. Trees, ooh. Yeah, I could do that. Um, I did add, I don't know if you guys could see this, I did add that highlight color that we had with um, that we had over here, um, I gave that to the trunks. So if you guys wanted to add that too, 
Um, but I think I might add a little bit more dimension to like this kind of grassy bush area, just a little bit. And then maybe some smaller trees in there. I think that is what I will do. I'm just going to add a little bit more highlight. Over here. I could probably just sit here and fiddle with things like all day. My goodness. It's just so fun. <laughs> just adding all those details to the rocks and such. Um. Okay, one more little detail um, I'm going to add to the, just some of it over here. Um, I already added my highlights to the clouds. So the clouds highlights were the, um, was that peach color. You could add a little bit more highlight um, over on the left side if you wanted to. So I'm just adding black in here, wherever I feel like there should be a shadow. I'm just poking it. Um, and I think it's helping adding just a little bit more dimension. Yeah, you can add more, you can add more if you want. 
Um, should you add peach to the skyline? Um, you can if you want to. Do I like watercolor? Yes, I love watercolor. I don't know that I'm very good at it, but I do like it. <laughs> Um, I usually do watercolor for my Patreon art challenge, art challenges, so. Uh, what brushes do you usually use? Um, I use a kit that is, it ranges from 12 to $20, depending on the day, um, from Amazon. And it is great. Um, I have it linked in the description below. Um, so if you are interested in buying the same kit that I have, that's exactly why I do it. Um, and so that it's like a pretty affordable, um, it's a pretty affordable, affordable kit. And it comes with, it also comes with a palette knife and a sponge. And it's just, it's really nice. Um, so, I mean, I've been using it for like a year and it's still not, it's still good. I still use it, so. Just kind of touching up some stuff. Um... Do you paint since you were a little girl? You were really good. Thank you. Um, I've I've painted on and off since I was little, but I didn't really start painting until I was about in college. Um, I would say. Um, and then I just kind of I didn't really I didn't really start painting until I started teaching um, at Michael's. So, there's that. But yeah, um, I'm gonna wrap up here in a second. Um, good tools don't make nice painting, depends on the artist. Um, but it also, if you do have bad, if you do have bad tools, um, it will, very much hinder um, a good artist though. I will say that. So having having good supplies does help in the long run. All right. Um, oh, need last four digits of phone number for Venmo, 3220. Thank you so much for wanting to donate. That's really nice of you. Um, yeah, so for anyone wanting to donate, I have a Venmo, I have a Cash App, I also have a PayPal, which is Samantha Anderson Artist at gmail.com. Um, if you want to get more for your tip, you could always become a Patreon um, or become a patron. And you can get traceables, you can get quick tips, extra classes, postcards, all sorts of things. Um, so that's also a perk of becoming a patron. Um, but yeah, um, that's pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and sign it in the corner and then we're all done. 
Um, I went over, I apologize for going over, it's more of just you guys were here and painting with me and sometimes I can get lost in that. Um, but thank you so much for sticking around and painting with me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sign it in the corner. Yeah, I would say that this is, this was one of the more challenging ones, um, even for me, but sometimes you got to just do it though. Just do the more challenging ones because how you're, sometimes you can't get better if you, if you always do what you know. Does that make sense? Um, and you're asking for a watercolor portrait tutorial. I am sure that there are plenty of tutorials on YouTube that are watercolor. They are not going to be mine because I'm going to be honest with you. I am just now learning watercolor as well. Um, so I do not feel, I do not feel, um, inept to teach watercolor. I feel like I don't know enough about the subject, um, to be a good teacher for that. I would love to eventually. I think that would be great eventually. Um, but right now I don't, I don't teach watercolor, but if you want to come paint with me with watercolor, um, I do an art challenge and a, um, art and chat on my Patreon so once a month we get together and we all art together. Um, it's live. I'm not like teaching or anything, but we're just kind of hanging out and painting together. So anyways, it has been a lovely class. Thank you so much for um, tuning in and painting with me. Please, please, please go to my artist community on Facebook. Uh, join the group. Post your paintings. Um, I will be posting, um, I'll be posting my painting in an album and then you can just add your painting to that album okay so yeah thank you so much for painting along with me and we'll see you in two weeks okay have a lovely lovely night or morning or however wherever it is <laughs> oh turn out great yes they are so much fun thank you of course. Well, hopefully we will see you soon. We'll see you for the next one. And my program is like freaking out. So I can't like end it. <laughs> Give me one second. Oh no. Well, you guys can all leave. I have to figure this out because it's like frozen now. <laughs>